welcome back, I'm Eric Kane. Uh, House of the Dragon, man. Oh, uh, I, I, you know, I know that the, the season finale leaked and everything, but I personally refrain from watching it until tonight when I can watch it the way God intended on HBO Max. Uh, most of the season I've watched a screener. It was nice to watch you know, a version of the of the show that didn't have my name bouncing around as a watermark uh, to prevent, you know, the exact thing that, that actually happened with this finale. Oddly enough, they didn't send screeners out for the finale, but somehow it still leaked. Uh, so I knew what was coming, basically, because I've read Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, which tells the story of Dance of Dragons, the Civil War, that this... House of the Dragon is based on, uh, but I still had this this terrible feel. I mean, this terrible knot in my stomach the whole time I watched this episode, and uh, because you know you know what's coming. I also had goosebumps. Like, what a wonderful episode this was, even though it ends so so tragically. Uh, you know, we basically in this episode, Rhaenyra and Damon are informed of the news that, you know, that there was this coup and the Greens took over and they, they crowned Aegon. Uh, Lord Corlys Velaryon also arrives at Dragonstone and he's looking a little worse for wear, but he's alive. And uh, he's convinced by Rhaenys, his wife, the princess, that they need to declare for Rhaenyra for the sake of their grandchildren. And, and for the sake of the realm, because she believes Rhaenyra is the only one who has shown a level head so far. Uh, we also learned that Daemon was never told the prophecy of A Song of Ice and Fire by his brother Viserys. In an interesting and odd and slightly disturbing scene where he actually seems to get kind of annoyed with uh, Rhaenyra's lack of action and grabs her by the throat and sort of like chokes her a little bit. I mean, it's, Damon is such an interesting character because he's kind of a bastard. Like, he, he just does unlikable and unpleasant things. And he's he's just, he's kind of an asshole. But, uh, but you still kind of like him. You know, that scene is, uh, is then paralleled with him walking into the dragon pit to, I guess, approach, I think that dragon is Vermithor. Vermithor? Vermithor, yeah. One of the, one of, the only dragon that's nearly as big and old and dangerous as um, Vagar, the, the Aemon's dragon, which, you know, was also was one of the three dragons that Aegon the Conqueror used to take over the Seven Kingdoms. Um, and we'll get to him in a minute. Or her in a minute. Sorry. I think he's her. Anyways. It doesn't really matter what gender the dragons are. They're fucking dragons. Uh... But he goes down into that pit and he sings this very lovely haunting song, I think in Old Valyrian, to the dragon. Uh, but but we learn also that, that, that Team Black has a lot of dragons. They have potentially like 13 or more dragons compared to the three adult dragons that, the, that Team Green has. Of course, one of those is, is a giant, massive dragon. Obviously, super dangerous dragon worth at least two or three smaller dragons, uh, but they still outnumber their enemy in terms of dragons. They don't necessarily outnumber the enemy in terms of anything else. So, of course, uh, uh, all right. So, uh, the other big events when Rhaenyra finds out that her father is dead and that the, the that Alicent has helped usurp her throne. And their half brother Aegon is now sitting as King Aegon II. Uh, she goes into labor and she gives birth to a a stillborn monstrosity. So this would be her sixth birth, but this one uh, stillborn. Uh, and and we've seen birth, the act of giving birth, take place now several times throughout the season, and it's as it should be always sort of an important moment. Uh, and it's in, I, there's not that many shows that, that emphasize birth so much, but, but in, in this, in this, uh, this world of succession and passing on this legacy, you know, birth is very crucial to that and, and having children, especially having sons in this, in this patriarch, patriarchal world. Um, 
but this was this was Rhaenyra's worst birth, and it's you know she survives it, which is more than we can say for her mother or uh, for for Damon's uh, previous wife. Um, she survives; her child does not. Uh, they go to to do you know the burial, uh, and and then Eric, the the knight, uh, the king's guardsman shows up. One of the twins shows up and. Uh, swears his sword to Rhaenyra and brings with him Viserys's crown. So Aegon may have the the, the one crown, but she has the other now. Um, and the the name of the episode, the, the the Black Queen. You know, she's black, and Alicent's green, and uh, and Aegon's green, and and now we have a king and a queen, which is a problem for the realm. Uh, so, Rhaenyra doesn't want to act too hastily, similar to how Rhaenys didn't want to act too hastily. She, you know, Rhaenys says, this was not my war to start. Uh, well, Rhaenyra doesn't want to, to rush too quickly to war either. So when Otto Hightower shows up and offers her uh, terms for peace, which are fairly generous terms, <laughs> and Damon's like, uh, I would rather feed my children to the dragons than have have them uh, be squire and cupbearer to your drunken bleep of a king, which was pretty funny. I chuckled. Uh, but she, unlike her husband and uncle, wants to, Rhaenyra wants to not be too hasty. She says she wants to know who her allies are before sending them to war. Damon, of course, wants to rush to war as fast as possible. And maybe he's right. You, have, you appreciate her sobriety and all of this, but maybe he's right. They have the dragons. They may not have the troops, but if they can move quickly enough, they may be able to topple the usurper king and, and win, win King's Landing. But that is not to be, and things go badly pretty fast. Uh, they, 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 they do all their battle planning around this really cool table where they light up the like beneath it and then the the light from the fire shows up on the table and like marks all the different like words and borders and stuff that's pretty neat uh they need to secure the stormlands the baratheons they need to secure the vale and they need to secure the north and the riverlands uh damon is planning to go talk to grover tully himself Grover Tully is, you know, one of the... The Riverlands are, like, basically an unruly bunch of various lords and kings and... Not kings. Lords and, and, and knights. And, and they're not as controlled by their liege, by their the high... Like, the House Tully, as some other lands may be. The more orderly, like the Reach or the, you know, like the Lannisters... They have, or even the North, even though the North is kind of wild, they kind of have their their realm under control. Whereas the Riverlands are are kind of just all over the place. So uh, Damon's going to go treat with Grover Tully himself. Fun fact: Grover Tully's grandson is named Elmo Tully, and Elmo's two sons are Kermit Tully and <laughs> Oscar Tully. So there's this whole little Sesame Street Muppets uh, Easter egg in, in, in this story. But uh, Jace is going to go first to the Vale and, and speak with uh, uh, Lady Aaron, and then to the north, to Winterfell, to treat with uh, Lord Stark. They're not too worried about these two houses because the Vale is close family, uh, and the north... They're just so fucking honorable all the time. Like, they made a vow. They made an oath. They're never going to break that. Like, if anything, they're going to, like, underline it and double down on it. So, but it's further. So she sent, you know, so Rhaenyra sends her eldest son, Jaceris, to go to these two places. I mean, it's very, very far to get to the north. Uh, and they're going to, and she sends her younger son, Luke, Luceris, on the shorter trip to Lord Boros Baratheon. Now, this seem, this is supposed to be the sort of easy trip, the, the short flight, and she thinks that Lord Boros will, you know, stand by his word or his father's oath to uh, to her. But but there's a problem. 
Alicent has sent her uh, son, Amond, to the Stormlands, to Storm's End. And Amond and... And he, he arrives a little bit before Luke. And uh, it turns out that uh, Lord Baratheon is not at all amenable to Rhaenyra's uh, request that he remember his father's oath. He's quite hostile, actually, and, and points out that the, that the Greens have brought generous terms, including a marriage proposal. And uh, so he sends Luke on his way. And as Luke's leaving, Aemond says, wait, you know, I want you to cut your eye out as a payment for mine. And he removes his patch and you see the, like the, I don't know, sapphire gemstone eye that he has now. Uh, and Luke's like, no, I won't do that. And so then Aemon looks like he's going to attack and he calls him a craven. And Lord Baratheon's like, no, 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 no none of that here. Like, you're not going to go spilling blood in my hall. Uh, go home. Everybody. And so Luke leaves on Erex, his dragon Erex, and then we see a huge shadow pass over him, and it's Aemon and Vagar. And uh, this is an interesting scene because, you know, uh, it, it really feels like the dragons are... are neither dragon is fully under control of its rider. So... While the well, you know, Luke is just trying to get away. His dragon then stops listening to him and actually goes on the offensive. And then Aemond was just messing with Luke. He's just messing with him, scaring him, get, putting the fright in him. He's laughing the whole time. But then he loses control of his dragon. And as Eric and Luke fly up above the clouds and, you know, before it's this raging storm and it's suddenly Vagar comes out and just boom, just bites that dragon into, into pieces. And you see, you know, the wings and tail and you can't even see the body of, of Luke, Luke Valarian fall, but uh, the dragon and its rider are both killed. And Aemond looks genuinely distressed by this. This was not what he was planning. He was not planning on on you know he knows that killing his nephew is as much as he's enjoyed calling him lord strong and as much as he doesn't like him he wasn't out to like start things off so badly um and this is a little bit of a diversion or a, a change from the book uh again the book we are getting rather than a narrative telling of of you know what happens what really happens we're getting mixed reports of what happens from different sources. So I always like to look at as many of the changes in the show as, as sort of like, this is what actually happened. And the book is kind of like what people said happened. So you get, you kind of get two different versions. You get the, in the show, you got like, well, this is what really happened. In the book, this is just what sources report us to happen. And no one was there except for Eamon and Luke. And Eamon, of course, goes on to be, be named Eamon Kinslayer for this because he kills his, his nephew. Uh, and is, is given this, you know, he's got this reputation that follows him from that. But in this version, he wasn't even trying to. He was actually quite shocked by what his dragon did. And it just shows you how powerful these dragons are and how these young men who are riding them are really out of their depth. Uh, I kind of like this change, actually. Like, Aemond is still a sinister figure. But here we show him as, like, also more human. Like, he wasn't trying to kill his 14-year-old nephew. He's only, like, six years younger than... Older than, than Luke. But still, uh, he he's not trying to kill his nephew here. He's trying to scare him. He's having a jape. He's having fun. He's he's putting the fear of the gods in him. And then, and then things get out of control. And he kills him. Uh, and this, of course, is a catalyst for everything to come. Like... Up to this point, Rhaenyra was like, we're not going to do anything. We're not. But then the final scene, we see Damon telling her, and we don't hear anything to say. For a long time, we only see the back of her head, and then she turns, and you can just tell how pissed she is. Like, how sad, how, how horrible this moment must be for her. But, like, shit is about to go down. Like, this means war. Uh, 
So an interesting change, a really interesting change, especially because like so much of it is a, of, of, of this show is very faithful to the books, but or to the book, it's just one book. Uh, but makes, but they 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 do take. I think they've taken a lot of liberties with how they draw the characters. Like, uh, I think Rhaenyra is more sympathetic for sure in the show than she is in the books. But I also think that most of the characters are more sympathetic. Alicent is more sympathetic. Uh, I hear this this portrayal of Aemon and what he's done. That he's even more sympathetic. Um, I think that they've done. A really good job at, at giving more layers and more humanity to a lot of these characters who we just sort of are given a historical uh, kind of shallow view of in the book I mean the book it covers a ton of ground right and we don't get a lot of these intimate moments and here we're given more intimate moments and we're given more fleshed out characters and I really love that about this show I love how it's it's enriching it's, it's using narrative to enrich this story that we already know, those of us that have read the book, uh, but in a more, in a deeper and more uh, humanizing way. So uh, obviously shit's about to get crazy. Uh, the, the war is about to kick off in full gear. Uh, Rhaenyra's restraint is certainly out the window at this point. And yeah, shit's gonna hit the fans. So uh, yeah, I loved this episode. I thought I thought it was just beautifully made and super intense, and I was just you know glued to the screen the whole time. So let me know what you think. Uh, you know of the season. I'll probably do a post post mortem uh, post mortem season, full season review. You know breakdown whatever uh, in the in the next few days. But for now, you know this finale was tremendous, and really sets the stage for season two. Hopefully we don't have to wait too long before season two. I know Rings of Power, we have to wait till 2024. But I really am I'm hoping that we get, you know, season two of this show uh, a year from now. So, a whole year though, that sounds like a long time to wait. It's hardly fair. I mean, to be fair, we've had to wait like, what, 12 years for, for Winds of Winter or some shit? 11 years? I don't know. We won't have to wait. We won't have to wait that long. So... Thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, yada, 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 and uh, peace.